welcome to West Pokot County, the land of hidden treasures. Guys, welcome to West Pokot County, the land of hidden treasures. Let's find some treasures, shall we? Anyway, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is your boy, the Time Master KE, the real village boy. And today, today guys, I'm out of the village uh, because we are off uh, out for an amazing adventure guys if uh, you can read it's uh, welcome to the land of hidden treasures and guys let's go find some treasures together anyway uh, if it's the first time you're coming across this channel welcome so much uh, consider subscribing consider liking this is the place where we share love you know positive vibes uh, and where we always have amazing videos and amazing interactions uh, and uh, you can always uh, subscribe you know hit the notification bell so that whenever i put up a video you'll be the first one to watch also drop me a comment tell me where you're watching from you know tell me what you think about this video and let's grow together and as usual i always uh, say for me if you drop me a comment be rest assured that i reply sometimes you know it might take uh, a few days to reply but honestly i must reply to all the comments that you make because i value your input and your suggestions so much so guys we are on this highway uh this highway comes from kitale going to this highway goes to from kitale to lodua and to the most famous uh refugee camp the most famous refugee camp that you know of it's called uh kakuma refugee camp so if you want to go to kakuma refugee camp you'll go through this uh route if you want to go to sudan Mawira, yeah. if you want to go to Sudan, you'll use this route. Sudan, my home. Yes. Okay. If you want to go to Kakuma refugee camp, mm -hmm. you use this route. Okay. Yes. So guys, we are with uh, Mawira, only Mawira on YouTube. Hey, Mama. Anyway, so today we are not going to go to Kakuma, we are not going to go to Sudan. We only want to move to this new county that we call uh, West Pokot County. Uh, let me give you a brief history about West Pokot County. West Pokot County first uh, is a home to a tribe that we call the Pokot tribe. The Pokot tribe are popular for one thing. They are, you know, pastoralists. And uh, this is the county. You can see it's called the West Pokot County. And they say it's the land of hidden treasures. I don't know. I don't know if uh, there are treasures, but uh, we are going to find that in a moment. So. I was talking about uh, the culture and uh, what the, the, the Pokots do. So actually, the Pokot or the people of West Pokot or the Pokot people uh, engage in castro, ca cattle rustling a lot. I know that uh, practice was uh, far long ago, but uh, I understand that it still happens. You know, like when a kid is initiated to manhood, that is circumcision. After circumcision, he is supposed to marry. And to show that he has become a full man of the community, he has, go, he has to go to another community, you know, to steal cows, so that he can also come and use it as bread price. And also to show that he is a ready man um, for the community and for the society, that he can defend, he is a man that can defend the community. So that's like the culture, and that's what they do. And honestly, you know, uh, my home is neighboring the Pokot people. The, if you watch my previous video, there's a forest that we show you. So what separates us and the Pokot or the West Pokot County is uh, the forest, the Cherengani forest that we were showing you. So what would happen when it was that time for circumcision, after circumcision, the boys would now cross over to our area to steal cows. So they will come to our area and steal cows. And let me tell you guys, when these guys are stealing, when they are stealing cows, they don't come and steal from one homestead. They steal a whole village. Trust you me, I have witnessed this. They steal a whole village. Like the whole of our village, cows, you will see like thousands of cows moving into the forest. And then they will take them now to their home and they will use it as bride price. They will celebrate and now they will become full men. So that's actually the small culture, you know, a quick, a quick culture and explanation about the Pokot people. But right now, I believe, I want to believe that they are civilized, a civilization has come along and all these things are things of the past. So we don't judge them or we don't view them with that. 
Anyway, that's not the main reason as to why we are in West Pokot County. Uh, the main reason as to why we are in West Pokot County uh, is because of something we call the Kapenguria Six. These are the people uh, that fought for the independence of Kenya. So, uh, there's a group of six people, six people that were jailed during the fight of independence. And the place that they were jailed is called Kapenguria. Kapenguria is just a, a town next to here, like uh, three kilometers from here. There is a town called Kapenguria. That's like the headquarters of uh, West Pokot County. So, these guys that uh, fought for independence, including the first president of, of Kenya that we call Mzee um, Jomo Kenyatta, they were taken and jailed here. So today, that's actually the story we want to bring you. We want to bring you the history, you know, of Kenya and uh, the history of these uh, freedom fighters that, you know, to some extent, uh, to some extent they are being forgotten, you know, as time goes by. All the things that they did, who they were, what good things they did for the country, all the troubles they went through is being forgotten. So today we decided, let's go explore this, you know, uh, for ourselves first so that we can get to understand our history and also so that you can also understand the history of Kenya and the history of uh, freedom fighting in Kenya. So that's actually the reason as to why we are here. We are going to see what we call the Kapenguria Six. And Mawira is here. I don't know, Mawira is feeling sleepy. I don't understand. What's the issue, Mawira? Are you excited about today? I'm feeling sleepy. I'm not excited. I'm just, I don't know. You're sleepy? Mm. Yesterday we had a very, a very tough challenge. <laughs> Guys, I know you've by now you've watched the previous video, and if you have not watched the previous video, please go back. I'll link it up here. I'll link it up here. Go watch it, and then you'll understand what Mawira is saying. <laughs> Yesterday you were in a military camp, <laughs> and I'm still feeling the aftermath. Yeah, sure, that's true. But uh, I'm very much excited to go and see the Kapinguria Six uh, prison. Mm -hmm. I want to go and see like, these things. We used to read them in books. So yeah, in high school I history. Want to go and experience it. Wow. Maybe I can be the, the next president. So right now, in, in case I go there and I get motivated, mm -hmm. I may now start uh, fighting for freedom of Kenya. Then they stick. Oh, well, Kenya does not have freedom. Why, why do you want to fight for freedom of Kenya? We want to, the tax to be reduced. Uh -huh. So where do you want the government to run your services from? If you don't want to pay tax. If they take tax, tax they should be accountable and make yeah, that, the taxes to be exactly that's, that, that's what you should have been saying. They should be accountable for the tax they are taking, not the tax to be reduced. Yeah. Because if uh, we, we, do, we don't pay tax, the government will not have money to run, you know, uh, to deliver services to us. So the only thing but we need to do... They usually borrow some loans, where do they take the money? Well, uh, that uh, is not in my place to explain <laughs> because I don't know, honestly. But my point is, my point is, my point is, we should just pressure them to deliver to us. Yes. Government, yes. please deliver to us. <laughs> wow, wow. Anyway, so let's go, boy. Let's get going, eh? Let's go. Yeah, guys, uh, watch this video up to the end. Let's go do this adventure. We have been told this is the land of uh, hidden treasures. Let's see, maybe we'll also find some more treasures. I don't know. Go and do. I don't know. They're saying hidden treasures, so I don't know. Let's go and learn about the hidden treasures. Yeah, maybe we'll get to know about them. You know, I'm really sorry for my shoes. This shoe was supposed to be strictly for going when I'm going to the airport. <laughs> but now it has ended to be a village shoe. Why don't you wear shoes? Huh? Hmm? Man, I'm oh, you always go to airport. Hey, Mawira. When I, when I grow up, I want to be Mawira. Eh? I, feel, I feel sorry for this shoe. But I'll buy another one for the airport. Yeah, specifically for the airport. Yeah, just for going to the airport when I feel like stepping like a cool boy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, me, I always have mine. Anyway, yeah. I always have mine that are simple. Let me not show them. <laughs> someone stole me. I had like, such. Yes. When you are in Marwa space, someone stole them. Simple like this. Oh, they are the other ones. Let me try and fit. Oh, the, seriously, Mawira, don't you know defile my slipper? <laughs> <laughs> you are defiling it. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> Guys, look at this leg. Humongous. Humongous. Anyway, let's get That's going. That's a leg from the, the, the descendant of, of Goliath. You know, uh, one day guys I'll bring you this story. There's one there's one person in Mwanza mm -hmm. uh, from long 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 ago guys. Mwanza is a city in Tanzania. Mm. So this guy mm. uh, 
He stepped on stone and left his footprints ah. on stone. Up to now, they are there. So very soon, guys, when I go is to he Tanzania, a real person? yeah, he was a real person. He was, am he still alive? No, he, he he's not alive. But he, he's he was like you know, a mysterious person. Let's put it, call him that. Mm -hmm. He had some powers. He was mysterious, mysterious. Mm -hmm. So he stepped on a stone and left his footprint on stone. So guys, stay tuned. Soon when I'll be hitting the road, I'll bring you that story. Okay. Yeah, but for now, let's get going, bro. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, welcome back. You know, finally, we are in uh, Kapenguria town. Uh, these are like some of the back streets. This is not the real back, uh, the town. These are the back streets. And guys, uh, the weather is not that good. Mawera is uh, having my jacket, so I want to go get my jacket and then we can continue. But actually, this is like the surrounding, how it looks like. And uh, this is the place, Kapenguria Museum. And we just want to go inside, you know, and see what what is there and what it has to offer, guys. So. This is uh, the surrounding from the outside, you know. Look at the house. You know, there you are told. Uh, let me show you. Let me start from here. It's written Political Development Gallery right there. But I want us to start from here. Here, it is written uh, The Heroes, The Heroes Cells. So actually, the hero cells, let me go inside because it's raining. So actually, the hero cells, let me wipe this. The hero cells, this is the place where now like uh, the freedom fighters were jailed. And uh, I think these are the places we have different cells, I guess so. Mauro, where's my jacket, please? It's there, on the seat. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So these are the cells. They used to look like this. That I think they've just been, you know, painted and kept well for the future use. But as you come here to the door first, eh, you will see the other hall, you know? So this, I think, is where the guards used to come and peep uh, to the prisoners while they're inside. So let's see who uh, sell this was. Guys, uh, all the, all the, sorry, all the cells have uh, explanations on the wall. And let's see what this says. This is the written Kapenguria 6. This was the reporting room at Kapenguria Prison Cells in Kenya, Heroes of Independence. Yeah, guys, so actually, uh, this place is where when the prisoners were brought, they were first, uh, they would first report here. You know, this was like the reporting desk. So it is, this was the reporting room. And uh, right here we have the pictures of uh, the famous Kapenguria 6, the prisoners. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this were the Kapenguria six prisoners and right here that is the founding father of our country the founding father of the nation the first president of Kenya Mzee Jomo Kenyatta together with these people you see they are all here one two three four five six you know and uh, they are here their names the first one was uh, Jomo Kenyatta and he was the chairman of Kau. You know, these people were, were arrested because they, 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 they started coming up with parties that, would, uh, that started, you know, uh, pushing for, for democracy. Not actually even democracy. They started pushing for independence, you know, through these parties. And uh, the British government didn't like that or didn't want that because they didn't want Pan-Africanism, you know, or uh, rise of Africans. The next one was uh, Fred Kubai, was a member. Fred Kubai was a member of uh, the cow. The cow. This was a pol political party. Cow was a political party. So he was also a member. Richard Aching Aneko was the secretary. Builder Kagia was a member of the executive of Cow. Kongo Karumba, chairman of the local Cow branch. Paul Gay, leader of the Akamba in Cow. So actually, all these they were members of the Cow of this political party that uh, the Jomo Kenyatta, who was the chairman and who later became the first president, had founded. So uh, the British government did not like this or did not want this to spread, so they arrested them. But also they were accusing them of being, you know, uh, in the group that we call the Mau Mau. 
uh, actually the Mau Mau was one of the famous group uh, in Mount Kenya that uh, fought for the independence, really fought with the, with the British government because Kenya was colonized by the British. So they were accused of uh, funding and being members of the Mau Mau and actually uh, Jomo Kenyatta was believed to be the leader of Mau Mau. Yeah? So that's actually a, a brief history of uh, who they were and why they were arrested, you know. You know, the trial, they're saying the application to arrest the six was made to the District Commission of Kapenguria, a remote settlement, 200 mi 280 miles, guys. You know, right now we are 280 miles away from Nairobi and the homes of the accused. So, uh, the accused people, they were arrested and jailed 200 miles away from their homes. You know, this was like to cut off communication with their families and also their friends so that they could not visit them because actually guys it is very far from Nairobi and considering the infrastructure of the later 1950s and 1960s there was no good road network so for you to come and visit your prison over here was a big issue so that's why I think they were they, 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 were, they were detained here you know Actually, it was detention. This was not a, this was not a jail because uh, there is no trial. This was just detention, guys, you know. Anyway, from the outside, looks green and well kept, and the house are old. Let's go to the next room, guys. This one here, and the old Shuja Fred Kubai. So this was a cell for uh, one of them was Fred Kubai and uh, the hole to peep through you see actually the cells were very small guys look at this i can touch both sides were well, very small very small very small uh somebody is calling me hello hello yes yes maraba Salama, can I can I call you in a minute? Uh. Okay, yeah. So this was a friend Kubai in his early ages, but to be honest, he looked mad. <laughs> he looked really mad. He looked like wow, wow. He was really mad. But this was him in his early ages. You know, this was him. He said uh, making speech at the opening of Kapenguria Museum. Yeah. So this is him, very old, he was making a speech during the open, uh, opening of this museum, you know, yes, and uh, this is his portrait, Those, that was one of the prisoners here, yeah, actually, if, if you've noticed, uh, most of these, uh, of the prisoners here, they, they came from one tribe, that is the Kikuyu tribe from the Mount Kenya area, or rather, let's say, most of the people here, we would call them they were Mau Mau freedom fighters. Most of them, they were just part of that group, you know. Here, this is closed, I don't know who, okay, this has been made. But this was Bildad Kagia. Everyone has his room. They were not allowed to see or meet each other, you know. Like, these guys... They could not even come outside, you know, because it was detention. They were not even allowed to come outside. So they would stay here and here alone. They would not even meet each other. Yes. So this was Bildad Kagia. Bildad Kagia. Yeah. This is him with his family. Him. You know, he's already passed on. He died in uh, uh, August uh, 205. You know. Bildad Kagia. So guys, these were like the people who were pushing, you know, for the African rights or the Kenyan rights. And actually most of them were educated, were a little bit educated. And that's what the, the British uh, government did not like about them. Because, you know, with them having education, they started, you know, uh, wanting to have rights, you know, they want to form political parties. Actually, they were pushing uh, for political parties and also to be represented in something that is, was used to call LegCo. Legical was like the parliament of the old time, the parliament that uh, 
is mm. let's say it's the current parliament, LEGCO. So what these guys wanted, they formed political party, and now they wanted African representation or Kenyan representation in that parliament, in the LEGCO parliament, you know? And uh, through that, that's uh, one of the things that led to their arrest. Shujakungu Karumba. Yes. Oh, and look where the windows were. Very high. But this was him. Kungu Karumba. They were, they are, most of them, they are all from Mount Kenya region, guys. All from Mount Kenya region. Basically, they, they were just Mau fighters. And uh, now to the main guy. Shuja Jomo Kenyatta. Yes. So. Mawira. I'm, I'm, I'm very much concentrating. You're concentrating a lot. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, leave that for Mawira and then. This was uh, Shuja Paul Ngay. Paul Ngay. You know? This was him, Paul Ngay. Total Chief Mkum Saka, you know, he was uh, from the Akamba, Akamba community. Yes, he was from the Akamba community. And uh, this is him. This, uh, I think, is after the independence and everything. Yes. Uh, and you see, he, here they are saying they are Britain Swahili, but uh, here. He fought overseas with the British Army in the Second World War and returned to return to found and dating the most radical outspoken of all unlicensed African newspapers Uhuru. So basically this guy uh, went uh, to fight with the British Army in the Second World War. When he came back uh, he opened uh, the most radical newspaper uh, African newspaper and it was also unlicensed so more reasons for him to be detained you know yeah, and then he became the secretary of the Kenyan African Union, that is Kau. Kau was the, like that first political party, Kenyan political party. So all that, all that were more reasons for him to be arrested. Wow. This sales was more, I can't imagine spending my days there inside alone. You know, you don't even meet other people. Maybe you could just talk to, to each other through the walls, but you don't get to meet each other. Damn it. Look at the surrounding. Guys, Mawira, you know, was doing his bit here for Kenyatta's story. But uh, this was uh, Kenyatta's uh, cell and... Uh, Kenyatta is like the first uh, president of Kenya, so w what we do, we call him the founding father of Kenya. I have a question on yes, your camera. Yes, please. Why was Chengoneko put alone? <laughs> okay, Chengoneko... Uh, he was put alone, bro. <laughs> we can read his story before we finish. Before we why, finish. Why was his room set up and it <laughs> looks bigger? Yeah. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Why was... Ramogia Chengoneko... Uh, uko Uyoma, Uyoma. I've been to Uyoma. Uyoma. Okay, you have uh, an English version. Yes. He edited uh, underground newspaper Ramogi. Which is a political mouthpiece. He, was nominated, he was nominated councillor for Nairobi municipality. He was arrested with the other 20th October 1952 and uh, accused of managing Mau Mau. Actually, these people, mm -hmm. they were all, you know, they had, they had links with the Mau Mau group. Yeah. Yes. But I, I, don't, I don't understand. Why? Okay, okay. Here is it. Why was an echo not held in the same block? Mm -hmm. As a Luo, with little knowledge of Kikuyu language, mm -hmm. he could not have participated in the rituals. It was therefore impossible to link him to Mau Mau. Subsequently, he was put in a separate cell. The cell had been dest uh, destroyed and was reconstructed as per the okay. This cell was reconstructed. Mm -hmm. But for him, mm -hmm. actually, this one, he was put in a different cell. Huh? You can come here because Special of like, case. yeah, because for <laughs> him, you see, all the others, they were put together. all the others, they came from the same tribe. They had links. He, the others, they came from the same tribe, yeah. the Kikuyu community. Yeah. You know, the Mau Mau, the Freedom Fighters. Mm -hmm. But him, uh, Ramogi, mm -hmm. he come, means he comes from the Luo community. The, the Luo. Yes, we have. It's called the Luo. The yes. Luo community. Not the the, the, Luo. the Luo is language. The Luo. The Luo is language. Uh -huh. 
uh, the community is Luo. Okay, okay. Yes, the language is Tolu. Oh. Yes. Uh, now you you go back to school. I'm your I'm the teacher here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, teacher. <laughs> yes. So for him, he came from a different community, which is a, a Luo community. Mm -hmm. So uh, that they could not, you know, like connect him directly to the Mau Mau group. Mm -hmm. You know, so they had they had uh, doubts about him. That's why he was given a separate room. And actually the room mm -hmm. is bigger than the others. So to <laughs> mean, that is to mean that they have a, a he had a special treatment. Mm -hmm. Yes. And actually, you know, yeah. uh, the Luo community is one of the community that collaborated yeah. with the British government. Sure, sure. Is he still so, alive? Is he still alive? No, 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 I don't think so, oh, but so you can look. All, all these people are dead now. I think all of them. Uh, let's see if he's alive. We haven't written him. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two or seven. seven. So there's one died two five, two or six, two or seven. Yeah, they almost died at the same time. So they are following each other. Yes. So mm -hmm. you know the law being a collaborators, I think they still are the, the, the British government had some soft spot for him. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they gave him a special treatment of <laughs> big room and separate with others. Actually, yeah, he could, he could at least see even even his window is not that high. Yeah. Yes. He didn't leave anything in this room. <laughs> Maybe, but the room is painted. I don't know why they should have not even done painting or what. Yeah, they should leave it. Maybe, original. yeah. Maybe they had some writings on the wall. We needed to see that. They should not paint that. They are affecting, you know. They are losing the history. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, guys, we are talking about um, Zay Jomo Kenyatta, the founding father of the first, uh, the first president, and also the chairman of uh, the first political party. So this is him. Let me show you. This is him as a teenager. Uh, this is him also with the British guys. Him as a teenager, but now him as the president and as the grown man. And this is his statue in Nairobi, Kenya. If you go in Nairobi, Kenya, you'll, you'll, you'll find this statue of him, you know, for respect as the founding father of the country. But uh, basically, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta was an educated man. You know, when the missionaries came, he went to school. He later went to he later went to Britain. You know, after going to Britain, uh, he he studied there more. He went to university. He also started working there, and also in Britain, he married a a, 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 a British wife. You know, he had the first wife from Zay Kenyatta was a British wife, uh, and they had a son together. And actually, you know, it's rumored that the wife had some uh, links to the royal family. So it is always believed. I don't know. I don't know how true is that. I can't. I, I can't. Sub, I can't. You know, say confidently. But it's always said that the Kenyatta family, which is like the ruling family in Kenya, have a connection with the royal family in Britain. You know, because the the wife, the first wife of uh, Mze Kenyatta, the first president of Kenya, came from there. So I think Britain has a lot of uh, historical connection with Kenya. You know, even the 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 the, the late the queen of uh, Britain, uh, she became a queen while in Kenya. You know, she came to Kenya visiting as a princess. She went to a hotel. Actually, one day I'll visit that hotel so that I can get to show you. So she she went to this hotel as a as a princess, but she came down as a queen. Yes, this is after the father died, so she automatically became like the the next queen. She was next in line. She was still young, I think, at the age of 22. You can correct me, guys, but I think uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, became queen uh, at the age of uh, at the age of around 22, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so she was in Kenya at that time. So there's a lot of connection between Kenya and Britain, and uh, that was due to you know the the connections of um, Mze Jomo Kenyatta, the first father of. Uh, the first president of Kenya, you know, and he was born in 1894. We're not sure actually, guys, they say sometime around. The exact dates are not sure, so, but somewhere around there. But uh, yes, so Mze Jomo Kenyatta was arrested because uh, first uh, he became, he was believed to be the leader of Mau Mau, you know, the leader of Mau Mau, the brains behind the Mau Mau uh, freedom fighters. And again, he became the chairman or he founded the, uh, the political party that was called the Kenya. Let me, let me find it. Uh, where, is it? where is it? 
the Kenya African Union, or rather what we call the CAO. So he became, he founded and became the chairman uh, of the political party. And through that, uh, you know, they started agitating for, you know, independence, uh, equal rights and representation of the Kenyans or the Africans in the legislative uh, uh, parliament and all that. And that's why they were arrested and put here. So, yeah, this was his, uh, this uh, cell. And actually, uh, this is him, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta. There's this story that uh, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta was once uh, supposed to be killed and the guard saved him, told him about it. So you, the guard warned him not to sleep on bed, told him uh, because there was a plan to kill him, to shoot him and kill him. So on that night, Mzee did not sleep on bed. He decided to sleep down. And uh, when the, people, the guys came, they shot at the bed. And actually you can see the wall as a bullet mark. This is a mark, this was the bullet mark. This is where the, the bullets hit that was intended to kill um, Zay Jomo Kenyatta before he became president. But uh, since he had a tip, he did not, you know, he was not there. And uh, that's how he survived. And at the end, that's how he became president of Kenya. You know, after all this, after the fight for independence became, uh, you know, intense, intense, they had to, you know, they just, uh, the British government uh, realized that we cannot keep on doing this. So they just uh, let it. And uh, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta uh, became the first president. That is uh, in 19, uh, no, he first became the prime minister, I think, in 1963. And then, uh, no, 1962. I'll, I'll have to check my history well. And then after that, uh, Kenya became, you know, a republic. It became independent and he became the first president. But that was a brief history. And how uh, this cells was the room of uh, the founding father of the country and the freedom fighters. So, yes, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, today's. Today, I think today is, uh, it was so, uh, the video was educational. It was just not in any other adventure or anything it was educational this was a different cell you can see guys it's in a different block you know those ones they were jailed together but this different block was for one of them who was called uh a ching and echo and uh, i have explained why he was given like special treatment because this was some sort of special treatment so guys, keep watching. Uh, I hope you're enjoying. I hope you are getting some education about the Kenyan uh, independence and the history of Kenya. Uh, once in a while, we bring you educative stuff and amazing, you know, amazing stuff. So guys, drop me a comment down in the comment section. Tell me if you're enjoying. Tell me if you're loving this kind of educational videos so that I can always make an episode. Uh, I can always make an episode for you. But uh, may God bless you for watching. Let's continue watching. Right now, I just want to pass by the gallery because we have a gallery. I want to quickly pass by the gallery, show you stuff as we go because it's very late. It's getting late and it's raining a lot. We don't want, you know, to be stuck here. Yeah. So let's see. Let's see the gallery. I don't know what they have here. Oh, yeah. This now this is like a, a museum now, you know, and this will show you the old tools that were used by the communities, the surrounding communities, you see. These ones were for keeping water and the stuff, also for cooking. That is for keeping milk, the traditional one for keeping milk. These were weapons, you see the weapons, Arungu, Olakab, and all other weapons. So these were old time things that were used here, guys. You know, the horns, these were like the sandals made of skin, cow skin. Uh, this was like the clothing, you know, all the beddings. So a lot of the old stuff. Look at this seat. Pretty amazing. Now we go to this other section. I think this is another art gallery. You know, and they have amazing drawings of the wall, you know. Really amazing drawings. Uh, this picture, let me explain this picture a little bit. You know, the old people in old times and the community around here, uh, they used to drink blood. 
cow blood or animal's blood. So here they are spearing a cow so that they can get blood, you know, and then they collect blood and then they will drink it. Wow. The cultures of the old times. <laughs> wow. Another one here, the lady is uh, making flour the traditional way, grinding the flour using the rocks. So that is the lifestyle of the old times. Pokot Gallery. So this is for the Pokot community. Abarizenyu, Wazima, I. So these are like the beads, uh, the traditional beads for the Pokot community. You see, let me show you. This is how they used to dress in old time ways. Actually, there, there are still those that dress this way. You know. This was a uh, musical stuff, guys. You know, this is for music. This is all a uh, musical stuff. This one, this was a. You see, it's called. It's it's a wooden flute. You see how it is like wooden flute. And there's this is a six stringed instrument used as a guitar. This was used as a guitar. Yeah. These were jingles. So these are all stuff that were used by the Pokot community. They are still even used to the Pokot community even after now. This is a headdress. It was worn by old men. Old men. This was for old men and respected men. And here now we have... This one, actually this is a seat guys. This is a seat. They still use it even up today. You see? You, play, you carry it where you are going and then you place it down and sit on it. And then these are sandals made from animal animal skin and everything. You see now how you see them? This is how they used to look at the supermarket. Ah. And then on this side we have a sculpture of a, I think this is a Pokot woman. You know, yeah, this is a Pokot woman. This is actually how the homestead will look like. You know, guys? This is how the homestead will look like. Yes. So, this is a typical old time Pokot woman in the homestead. Uh, and uh, you can tell they did not used to have to wear the upper cloth, you see? She is a bear on the upper side. There are still communities that do that currently, but it's not that common. Yeah. So this was, this is just a, a you know, a, a depiction of the old time ways how they used to do it and then on this other side eh? and you can see th those are the mountains I think the Cherangani hills you know and on the other side we have Mount Elgon but now this was a, a an elder or the man of the house you know look at how they are dressed in skin Cow skin. Ah. So guys, thank you so much. I hope you're enjoying this. These are this was a very educative video and fun video. I'm enjoying myself, bringing back old time memories, and uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it actually. I hope you enjoy. In a moment, let me show you like the real, uh, like, you know, how the homestead of the Pokot community looks like. And uh, basically, this is how the homestead looks like, guys, you know. 
beautiful hut, grass thatch houses. Actually, you know, they are well maintained and well kept, guys. You know, so this is how like a uh, our homestead of, of a Pokot community or a Pokot family or a Pokot home will look like. First, you will start with this uh, house here. You know, these are uh, it has a fireplace, a fireplace, a bed on the side. And uh, let's say that's something like a store. So, welcome so much. In case you want to spend a night here, talk to me. And uh, you'll have an amazing experience. <laughs> now, in case you have uh, different wives, there's a room for the first wife. You know, it's written first wife hat. And uh, as usual again, fireplace, your bed, and uh, your place where you can sleep with your sheep. So it's all totally like that. You sleep there. Yeah, your, your sheep will sleep there. You have your fireplace. And this is for grinding the flour. Yes, guys. Would you, would you live or would you want to try such kind of an amazing lifestyle? Wow. And now this is if you have a, a son, is the boy's hut. And the boy's hut is basic. A small fireplace and a bed and that's it wow yeah. wow somebody was just calling me guys you know and i'm recording but uh actually these are typical homestead for a maasai community this is how it looks so amazing guys i'm really loving this you know wow you know and now if you have several wife if you don't have one wife if you have like four wives or five wives you'll make them hats around your your compound because uh in the you know in the uh, pokot community polygamy is allowed not actually even generally in the african the original african setup polygamy was a normal thing so in case you're a polygamous man and you want you have several wife you just build them different hats you know at the same compound and they will live together you know with respect and happily that's for sure actually what happens let me tell you this what happens uh, when you have the first wife and you want to get uh, the second wife actually the first wife when he, she sees she has kids and uh, she has uh, her place and everything that she needs you know when she's uh, she sees that her needs are taken care of she will actually advise the husband to get a second wife you know the wife will sit down the husband and tell uh, please i think we have enough i think uh, we have uh, enough uh, you know my wealth and by wealth mostly they consider uh, uh, you know cattle cows and goats and sheep so we'll tell her so please get another wife and she can even recommend get uh, go get that girl to come and be my second wife and then the man will go get the wife and uh, build a, a house just next next uh, to them and after doing that uh, the first the first uh, wife will actually donate some things some of her uh, possessions material possession she will actually donate them to the first to the second wife or to the young wife so that she can start life and they will live together happily with no pressure can you imagine that <laughs> can you imagine is that not crazy it's it's fun but crazy you know i heard of this story and i was like whoa whoa really that cannot happen in our 21st century our our 21st women oh you tell me if you can you can do such a thing but what i know is that no woman right now can do that apart from you know the 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 the, the, the pokot community they still do that up to date you know because they still hold on to their cultures really well and for me I'm not saying I'm a polygamous man, but I know, <laughs> guys, don't come for me. I'm not saying I'm a polygamous man, but uh, I can applaud them for holding on to their culture. Because that's their way of life from ever. You know, if your way of life was monogamy, hold on to it. If your way of life or your culture was polygamous, just do it, you know. Or in your culture, you just do it. You know, hold on into your, your originality, your roots. But uh, there are those cultures that uh, sometimes you feel like they're harmful. Those ones you can, you know, you can do away with, like a uh, girl child circumcision. Anyway, 
those things are subjective. You know, a lot of things in this world are subjective. So don't judge me or don't judge anyone who does uh, this kind of thing or who is polygamous. Do not judge them because everything in this life is subjective. It, it, it all comes down to who is doing this, uh, his point of view and all that. So I cannot judge or uh, I cannot judge anyone for being monogamous. I cannot judge anyone for being polygamous. But uh, that was actually an interesting fun fact that uh, the first wife would uh, encourage the man to marry more wives. And uh, after even he has married, he will donate some, he will donate, he'll donate some uh, stuff for the first wife to start life in. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Actually, this is going to be the end of my video. Like for real, this is going to be the end of my video. Uh, it was a long video. It was an educative video about the history of Kenya. Uh, guys, tell me that you enjoyed or you loved this video because uh, it was amazing, guys. Look at the environment. It has been raining. But uh, yeah, we managed to do this. So may God bless you, all the moderators. God bless you so much. I appreciate everything. Uh, everyone who watches, uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for always coming back to watch. Thank you for being, uh, you know, for being part of this. You know, this is a community and the community is me and you and you guys are making it a success. And uh, thank you so much. So from me to you, may God bless you. And as usual, respect so much. So I think it's time I have to go back home, you know, so that I can run other errands. Actually, back at home, we are building, you know, we are still building. We, uh, we are the final touches, but uh, we are, we have done a big step. So thank you so much, my people. And uh, from Time Master, may God bless you so, so, so much. But for now, bye-bye.